So, like many of us in the Guild Wars 2 realm right now, I have been pile driving through my saved up stash of money while trying to get the ascended gear and work on my legendary weapon. Many of you know, if you've gone into that realm, that it is not a cheap task to get some of the things that you need to get your tailoring and your weapon smithing and all those things to 500. I have been sinking gold like the Titanic, so I figured now was a good time to revamp my gold video that I have previously posted, I want to say a year or so ago. I'm going to revamp it a little differently than before. I'm going to change a lot of the methods because a lot of them, not that they're invalid now, but I think I want to replace some with ones that may be a little more work and less trying to beat around the system. But So we're going to revamp on the five ways I find to make the most gold in the realm of Guild Wars 2 as it stands today. Now, dungeons aren't something you can really start doing until you're a higher level. Even though the first dungeon is at 35, you don't really come proficient enough at them until you reach the higher levels, but it is still a good way to farm up some quick cash. At the end of every path, at every day, you get a bonus chest with 40 dungeon tokens specific to that dungeon and a little over one gold from the chest. Now, granted, certain dungeons, that's not worth the amount of time you will spend in them, but it if you're talking about the first two paths of Citadel of Flame or any of the paths of Honor of the Waves, you can get through those relatively quickly and make a gold in like 10 to 15 minutes. Now obviously you can only do this once per day, but if you take that gold amount and you put it on top of anything such as selling rare loot or the little coin purses you get, you can probably make one gold 50 silver to two gold per dungeon run which, if you do three or four dungeon runs a night, racks you around six gold for that one night, which is fairly well for some people. And so dungeons are a good way to make money, but there are a couple other ways that we are going to talk about next. Now, world events are another pretty decent way of making money, especially since they updated the game to have mega servers and have events run every 15 minutes. At this time span, you can run most of the main events within four to five hours, not including any of the big, big bosses such as Tequadal or the Evolved Jungle Worm. Now, for me, when I run these, usually I'm running them because I want to try to get that one in a million exotic or extended chest piece or chest or whatever. But you can still rack in some decent money. Obviously, you get a lot of greens and blues, which I usually salvage, but most of the time, I will sell the rares because they sell between 30 and 60 silver a piece, and I usually get two to three per event that I do, so if we put that in and we calculate in that sometimes you do get that exotic for seven or eight gold to sell if you don't use it, you can probably average 75 silver to one gold per world event, and then that increases further as you do the bigger events like the Claw of Jormag, or to Quaddle the Sunless, which gives you a lot more on most cases. So if you're averaging a gold for each world event, and you do every world event every 15 minutes for about 4 hours, you can gather a lot of gold. Now sometimes, obviously, you're not going to be that lucky, and you're not going to get exactly what you want, but again, just a rough estimate, it's a good way to make money quickly, and there's always world events to do. And even though you can only do them once per day for the bonus chest, you can also do them on every character to get the big chest that spawns at the end of the fight. And though you'll get less money on your second, third, or fourth character, if you're trying to pound through some money and you've run out of things to do, it's better than nothing, that's for sure. Now, another newer thing I want to talk about that wasn't really mentioned as much in my previous video is the Living World content. This was not something that was as big when I made the previous video. I don't even know if the original Fire and Frost Living World was out with the Molten Alliance where you could get the fused weapon skins. But Living World is quite an effective way of getting money if you think about it. I'm going to use an example from our current Dragon's Reach Part 1 content patch. Many people are farming Dry Top because they are trying to build the new Mysterious Vine backpack set that you can get. And a lot of the crafting materials you need for that are quite expensive on the auction house. Some of those plant foods 
or the clay pots cost 10, 11, 12 gold. And other than farming the bricks you need from dry top, the ingredients don't cost anywhere near that. If you would spend the time farming the bricks, uh, or the geodes to buy the bricks, and then you made the clay pots or whatever piece you wanted, you could probably make a hefty amount of gold if you kept to it for a while. Now, obviously, Living World updates every two weeks, and you'd have to be right on top of it. But if you've ever watched the auction house, after a little while, most new things tend to even out in pricing. With all these new, with all these new crafting materials for the back piece being so high in demand, you can farm the stuff you need and sell it and make a pretty decent profit while it lasts. Of course, you have to always keep up to date with how things are running on the auction house and the living world content. You always have to be ahead of everyone else that's trying the same thing. But if you do it successfully, you have the potential to make quite a bit of money. Now, this is something you can do if you have a decent amount of gold that you're willing to invest and leave for a long time. This is something I found in my previous video. I talked about how you could obviously buy gems for money and convert them to gold. Now, I wasn't really thinking about this until I watched this video again from a while ago. If you look at the amount of gold you can get with 100 gems, it's between 1 to 2 gold if you sell the gems. And I would say buying the gems is somewhere around two to three maybe at that point now that was a lot back then but if you look at now you can sell a hundred gems for nine to ten gold that is a tremendous increase over what we saw those many years ago and the trend seems to be upward i have not really seen a point where over the time period i've played the game there's been a dramatic decrease in gem to gold value so this is a potential method you can buy a decent amount of gems and for a certain amount of gold and just save them and mark how much you spend to buy them and just wait let them sit there and over time if this upward trend increases you will be able to sell your gems for much more gold than you bought them now obviously this takes time this is based on the theory that the gem to gold ratio will continue going up as it has been for the last year or so but if it does, and if you invest a decent amount of money, you can turn a pretty large profit from doing nothing but waiting and playing the game and letting it stick, just like a long-term stock investment. Now, just to keep it even with my last video, I'm going to do a fifth one that I kind of just came up with on the fly. We're going to talk about champion farming. Now, champion farming isn't something I do as much anymore, not that I really see it done as much unless you're doing guild running. Or something but basically what it is is you just run through a known area where champions spawn a lot and you just kill them off and you keep going and going and you can get a decent amount of money doing this because each champion will drop a chest with an exotic uh, loot bag in it and some money and then you'll probably get a rare or two now and again so you can sell those rares at level 80 for say 30 to 60 silver and if you run and you run and you run you can turn a decent amount of profit compared to other things you could be doing. So, this isn't something as widely implemented as it used to be, and obviously you'd have to find a group that's doing so, and that's not as easy now, but if you have a group of friends and you're all trying to make some money, get three, four, or five of you, if you're good, and go just go through Frostgorge Sound or an area where there's a lot of champions that keep respawning and just kill them over and over and over and you could still probably turn a decent profit. So that's going to be the end of this video. Obviously I left out a plethora of different things that I could talk about but I wanted to keep it at 5 like my last video and I didn't want to repeat a bunch of things I had done in my previous one because some of those methods still work in a different way now than they used to but I wanted to revamp this video because I know, as I said in the beginning, with Ascended gear and Legendary gear and all this gold heffy stuff going on, you really need to be able to farm up gold pretty quickly. And I would say, in summation, I, on average, run maybe two to three dungeons a night, which would get me about six gold, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we'll say ten world events, which gets me another eight or nine gold. So if I do those two, that gets me about 15 gold per night, which isn't a ton to some people, and it's a crap load to others, but 
there are ways to make money. It's not totally hard. You do have to put some work in. You do have to kind of look for it more. But if you really do things right, you can still make a lot of money. And as long as you don't go blowing it on a bunch of skins and stuff you don't need, it is within reach within a couple of months to get your full set of Ascended gear or your Legendaries or whatever it is your heart desires. So that's going to be the end of this video. Please like and subscribe and comment with any other suggestions that I may have left out for lack of time. And I'm going to be revamping a lot of my old Guild Wars 2 videos to be updated with the new content patches. So keep an eye out for those if you're interested and I will see you in my next video.